worthy to celebrate the exaltation of your whole glorious cross with sacred hymns and with songs when you appear on the last day and the sign of your cross will shine brighter than the sun gather us before you and surround us with your eternal light that we may raise glory and thanks to you to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Praise, glory, honor, and praise to the Savior who made the wood of his cross a strong fortress for his flock and established it as a sign of the covenant for the salvation of his inheritance. By his cross he exalted his church and gave joy to all people who believed in it. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ, our God, by your precious cross, you have given us perfect salvation and have made us worthy to celebrate this feast with hymns of praise proclaiming. Blessed are you, O wood of the Holy Cross, for you erased Adam's curse and restored his banished children to their inheritance. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you have united heavenly and earthly beings. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you fulfilled the words of the prophets. Enlighten the apostles in their preaching, crown the martyrs for their faith, and honor the confessors for their loyalty. Now, O Christ, our Savior, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make the celebration of the feast of the exaltation of your holy cross a sign of security and peace. By your cross, exalt your holy church, guide her shepherds, adorn her priests with virtue, purify her deacons, Help the elderly educate children, direct the young, protect orphans, care for widows, and grant rest in your dwellings of light to our brothers and sisters who have died hoping in you. May we find refuge in the shadow of your cross on the great day of your second coming that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever.
Jesus Christ, our Lord, accept these prayers and the fragrance of the incense that we have offered on the feast of the exaltation of your holy cross. May its sign always be visible before our eyes to strengthen us, that we may walk with you toward death. And then stand at your right hand to celebrate the feast of your eternal victory. We glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, listeners, and upon this parish and the children forever. So you, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you heard from me through many witnesses, entrust to faithful people who will have the ability to teach others as well. Bear your share of hardship along with me, like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. To satisfy the one who recruited him, a soldier does not become entangled in the business affairs of life. Similarly, an athlete cannot receive the winner's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer ought to have the first share of the crop reflect on what I am saying. For the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, such as my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. Praise be to God always.
Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Mark, who proclaim life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Mark writes, then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and they said to him, Rabbi, we desire you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he replied, What is it that you wish me to do for you? And they answered him, Grant that in your majesty we may sit one at your right hand and the other at your left. And Jesus said to them, You do not know for what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We can. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you shall drink, and the baptism with which I am baptized, you shall be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or on my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. And Jesus summoned them, and he said to them, you know that those who are recognized as rulers over the pagans lorded over them. And their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be this way with you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you shall be the slave of all. For the Son of Man has not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the truth, peace be with you. Choose reliable men who in turn will be able to teach. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Paul is in his second Roman imprisonment, as we call it. It's about the year 67, that he writes his letters to Timothy and to Titus. 
We call them the pastoral letters. St. Paul in prison, and he's going to die martyrdom probably within the year. It's under the persecutions of Nero. And he knows that in the parishes there are strange ideas, alien ideas, false ideas coming in. And the individuals who are coming in who are pushy to give those ideas and they're causing discord within the parishes that St. Paul has labored over over years, over 30 years at this point. And so he's writing to his successors, his bishops. He's writing to Timothy and he's writing to Titus to give them mostly practical directives. There's not a lot of doctrine as far as a profound teaching, if you want, like he does in Corinthians or others when he's dealing with very specific doctrinal issues. Here it is mostly to Timothy about make sure that you're laying a foundation that others will continue after you. This text is chosen because on one part, what St. Paul is doing with Timothy is giving him numerous examples of how the man of God is meant to live. And so it's not so much for us individually, because few of us have that apostolic obligation, but we all have an apostolic obligation, which is to make sure that the faith continues after us, that it is communicated to other people. And that's the very first line of the epistle today. Choose men who are reliable, to whom you can confide, so that they in turn may teach. So why is this text chosen for the exaltation of the Holy Cross? We have to remember that this last season that we have now, that will be repeated. This Sunday Mass is repeated. The Feast of the Holy Cross is repeated every single Sunday now between now and the end of October. It deals with the end of the world. Or we could say, which is why the quotations that are chosen from the creed for us, he shall come to judge the living and the dead, and of his kingdom there shall be no end, this judgment that is to come. It isn't about death. It's about moving toward death. If you notice the prayer in the Husoyo, give us the strength that you may accompany us essentially as we move toward death. Death we will consider between Epiphany and Lent, but it's about what we call temporariness. When we say the word temporary, it comes quite literally from the word in Latin for time, tempus. When we say temporary, it's just meant for a little bit a time. When we use the word ephemeral, that word ephemera in Greek means a day. So when something's ephemeral, it doesn't mean that it's superficial, it means it's passing, it lasts a day. And so the season of the Holy Cross is reminding us of the shortness of our lives and that the days that we spent are meant to be precisely, as far as the faith goes, working that others will extend this after us so that the generations to come will also be able to receive this healing faith. It's not morose, it's not sad, it's actually quite beautiful because it means that God in our generation by his providence has allowed us to receive this faith. There is no other salvation. Our Lord says that unless a man, he says on several occasions, those who believe shall be saved and those who do not believe. Those who profess me, I shall profess before my Father. Those who renounce me, I will renounce before my Father. A man must be born again of water and the Spirit or he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. This pathway is the way in which salvation by God's choice. We might have had our own better ideas, we think, but God's choice is that there is one God, one humanity, one salvation, one death, one resurrection, one church. And therefore, that one apostolic teaching, this is what St. Paul means to St. Timothy when he says, in Timothy, this, he's in Ephesus. In a number of years, he's going to be beaten to death by the pagans. That will be his martyrdom in Ephesus. During a religious festival, during a pagan religious festival, they will beat him to death. And so Timothy is told, time is short, we move toward death. So what do we do with the present? It's a big question. 
A lot of people waste every single day. Oh, they go to work, they need a check. But you know, if they didn't have to check, if they didn't need to check, they probably would never work at all. They didn't have to. Just sit around and just watch television or surf on the computer or whatever it is that we spend so much of our time doing. But being human, being profoundly relational in our contact with other people, strengthening family, strengthening community, strengthening society, well, wow. That's not all about me. That costs. That's a sacrifice in working with others and extending out beyond us, both on a natural level and on a supernatural level. On the natural level, we have community, we have family. On a supernatural level, we have community, parishes, and we have the church as a whole. These require of us sacrifice, which is why in the Etro, in the prayer of the Husoyo, it says to grant us your grace to strengthen us as we move toward death. But of course it finishes by saying, so that we may finish at your right hand and celebrate your eternal victory. But this is not sad. But the question becomes, what do we do with the time that is given to us today? How is this day spent? How is this day oriented toward others and ultimately toward God? And our relations to others have to be engrafted in that relation toward God. It's not neighbor and God, it's neighbor and God, orienting those relationships towards the divinity. And any relationship that we have that is not oriented towards God is wrong. There's something wrong with it. It is wounded, it is defective, it is something that needs to be healed. And so that's the reminder being sent to Timothy and Titus. You have been installed where you're at, you are teaching where you're at. You must always keep your eyes open. And I have to say, as a priest, that's always been the thing. How many vocations can you try to bring towards the priesthood? How many catechists can you find who can actually communicate in its integrity the faith? These are huge questions, and they weigh very heavily on shoulders. But even as parents, the question becomes, how do I educate my children so that they see honor and beauty and love within our family so that they continue our family? And even more importantly, at the level of the faith, how do I instill in the faith that they themselves will extend that faith as they go into their adult lives? These are huge questions, which is why St. Paul says to Timothy, look around you. Choose the people who are reliable, who you know will not embrace alien and foreign ideas to the Christian faith, but who are reliable and who in turn will be able to teach what I taught you. That's why he gives that little summary in this epistle today. You know my gospel. Jesus, son of God, seed of David, who died and rose for us, for our salvation. He says, this is my gospel. He gives us a little summary in the epistle today. But the importance here is not on that teaching. It's on that teaching being transmitted to others. If only we, each Catholic thought in these terms of the motion and the transparency and the ephemeralness of our lives, we would be so much more devoted to making sure this faith is communicated. People are free. If they don't want the faith, they don't want the faith. But on Judgment Day, we have to be able to stand and say, I communicated it as well as I could with your grace in its beauty, in its attractiveness, as well as I could with those with whom I came in contact. We must be able to say that on Judgment Day. Woe to us if on our day of our death we have only to say, oh yeah, thanks for the faith, it was great. I'm glad I have a possibility of salvation. And our Lord will say to us, but you receive in order to give. Who did you communicate it to? Did you try to communicate it? Did you present that reality of death and resurrection to others? You knew or should have known that time is short. That is our six-week meditation that we have with the season of the Holy Cross for us to think in all seriousness, what are we doing, what have we been doing 
What should we be doing? That God's name be known, that healing come to those of us around us, both at a natural and a supernatural level, and that in that strengthening, we move with great confidence temporarily in our lives towards that moment which is absolutely inexorable, which will be death. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saints Mary and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the parent members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Seven hundred fifty four. Seven five four. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God.
O Lord, may your peace and security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out and glorify and proclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Of 
salvation. And we ask you to have mercy on your worshipers and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, sinful children receive your graces we thank you for them and because of them May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. And we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith with blameless lives and with purity and holiness. May they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings, forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, and St. Marin, assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, of all faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest hoping in you awaiting that life-giving voice, calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf, 
and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. deceitful ways, and do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us, for yours is the kingdom, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el Kolechona. Faithful people who bow before you, deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and with holiness, so that through them we may be forgiven and be made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. Grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One holy Father, one holy Son, one holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body and our souls purified by your faith. 
forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord, our God, to you be glory
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and for the glory of your holy name and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo Elokuruchuna. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation, and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. So I want to take a moment to thank Paula and the rest of the choir for stepping into the gap. Last week, this week, you're doing beautifully. So you even have more recruits that are waving from the choir loft. So beautifully done. Thank you for stepping up in the moment of absence and difficulty. And of course, to everyone, as we mentioned in the bulletin, please keep our beloved FIFA in your prayers and her convalescence. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishments and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen.